thank you for the introduction. Um, so today I'm going to present um, a framework we developed in the compiler design lab in cooperation with the uh, computer graphics lab in the Zeland University to, to write uh, efficient uh, ray traversal algorithms. So the outline of this talk is that um, I will first motivate a bit the topics so of why do we need abstractions for um, ray traversal. And then I will detail those abstractions and show the results both in terms of performance but also in terms of uh, code complexity. And finally, go to the conclusion. So for the introduction, um, we, we have an, an equation that drives rendering, which is um, uh, you don't need to know the, the details, but it, the idea is that we need to compute the amount of light that um, is um, scattered at the surface point. So this equation states that um, there's a relationship between the incoming light and outgoing light, and to, to be able to evaluate this e equation, um, you need to perform uh, visibility computations, so to figure out uh, where the light is going to. And that is basically done using ray tracing. So if you take the um, a typical algorithm to do rendering, this is for instance, path tracing, it works by tracing rays from the camera, and then um, at the intersection, computing rays to, to the light sources to figure out whether the light is visible from, from the surface, and then um, also continuing the path and repeating that process several times uh, until the uh, path is complete. Of course, uh, you have to do this for every pixel in the image, and you may uh, end up tracing completely different paths, and the length, length of the paths is also um, varies a lot. So it's a complex problem, and you can't really pre-compute um, many, many things. So, for instance, to render such an image, you need half a, a billion rays, and um, it's still noisy. So maybe you don't see it really well, but there's still noise in this image due to the fact that it's a Monte Carlo-based simulation, so you need more and more samples to produce a uh, converged image. So, to speed up this process, we, in the literature, there are many approaches, and um, traditional approaches are using uh, are using acceleration data structures, um, bounding volume hierarchies, KD trees, and grids. So in this talk, I will only talk about bounding volume hierarchies, so BVHs. And um, on top of that, you can also have hardware acceleration, so SIMD or GPGPU, and you can also combine combine the two together, and that, that forms many different implementations. So there are two, two examples that I will use as a reference uh, in the um, evaluation, performance evaluation because these are developed by um, hardware vendors. This is in, uh, Optics by NVIDIA and Embry by Intel. And they are both handwritten uh, in hardware-specific implementations. So for instance, uh, Optics is written in CUDA and Embry is written with um, compiler intrinsics in C++. So, but before I get into the topic, I uh, first have to, I guess, define what the bounding bar hierarchies are. So I will give an example of how, how does this work. So both Embry and Optics use bounding volume hierarchies, and a bounding volume hierarchy is a tree in which um, every, every inner node is, uh, has a bounding box that contains both its children, and uh, every leaf contains a list of primitives. And by primitive, I mean um, a geometric object that uh, you're seeing contains some like a triangle, a sphere, um, kind of thing. So here's an example. You have a scene made of four primitives, um, a disk, a triangle, a rectangle, and a star, and you want to compute the um, intersection with a ray in red with the scene to figure out that it's actually intersecting the, the rectangle. So you build a, a, a BVH here in, on the right-hand side, and um, that BVH is basically made of a root node in a light yellow, and uh, two inner nodes that are children of that root node in orange and in blue, and the primitives at the leaves. And so when you want to intersect this ray with the bounding volume hierarchy, what you do is um, test the root node against the ray and you figure out that um, it's basically intersecting the root node so you can proceed to the children and the um, orange child is not intersected so you skip the complete left subtree and you can go into the right subtree and continue recursively like that. So it's pretty straightforward recursive algorithm. 
but um, in the implementation, they are written in a specialized manner for different architectures, so the implementation is um, highly specialized and hides the uh, conceptual um, aspects of the algorithm. So on, on the CPU, Embry uses um, SIMD and wider BVHs, so bounding point hierarchies with um, a higher number of children. And uh, on, on the GPU and optics, for instance, um, they, they are using uh, standard BVHs, so binary BVHs. So to give you an example, to get more into the details, here are two samples from, from both code bases. The idea here is that these, these two examples, they are actually doing the same thing. They are just written in a completely different manner, and it's not exactly clear that they are actually doing the same thing. But trust me, they actually do. And um, it's a problem, because you have two implementations that do the same thing. So you have to maintain both. You have to write both also and read both. And you need an expert to do that because whenever you need to make a change, you don't know where to make the change and you don't know um, how to make the change even. But the, the, the idea here is that the, the two implementations, they are conceptually doing the same thing, so there's no reason why you should write two different implementations for this. So now with the abstractions, uh, how to abstract on this, on, on this particular algorithm. So we have a language or a compiler framework uh, or in which we can develop these abstractions. Um, the programming language we use is called Impala. It's, there's a link to, to the repository here. Um, it's a dialect of Rust. And um, we have an intermediate representation that is inside this compiler that allows us to perform partial evaluation and closure elimination. And we have different backends to target different architectures, which we will use to, to um, run this code on both CPUs and GPUs. So just quick reminder about the syntax. So the syntax is similar to that of Rust, which means that variables are declared with let or let mutable from mutable variables. Um, we declare anonymous functions as just as in Rust, but we have also ad additions to the Rust syntax like uh, SIMD types here, which are directly mapped to vector types in the language or in the backend. Then we also have a special for loop syntax, which um, is actually syntactic sugar. So the for loop you have here with, takes two variables, var1 and var2, and, um, and it iterates over, um, or uses an iteration function to iterate over a domain. And this is actually syntactic sugar for calling the um, intersect, uh, sorry, the inter iteration function with the, with the two arguments and the body of the for loop uh, as a last argument. And so with, with this mechanism, we can write custom iteration functions. So as an example, a really simple example, you can, for instance, have a um, loop that iterates over an image and um, define your custom iteration function to iterate over an image. So here, the algorithm just scales the pixel of an image by um, 0 0.5. And a possible way to um, map this algorithm to, or to iterate over this image, and um, for instance, on the CPU platform, would be just to to, to do a loop over the rows, and then for every pixel in the row, do apply the body of the for loop. But um, you can also write a GPU mapping that would execute this loop on the GPU. And to do that, we we um, provide in the compiler intrinsic functions to trigger code generation for CUDA. So in this case, we have a CUDA function that takes a grid, a block, and a anonymous function that will then be executed and compiled on the GPU. So with this, this approach, what's interesting here is that we can just use the same code, uh, the same for loop, and it will be mapped completely differently for different um, architectures. So these now is the, this is now the um, code. It's a bit small, but uh, the, the idea is that I can just describe what, what it's doing. So this is the code that does the BVH traversal. It, it's um, pretty close to what you will find in textbooks. It's separating the concepts over which we iterate. It's, so it's using the same idea as, as I just described, using custom iteration function to iterate over different domains. So here there are three different domains highlighted in different colors. In green, you have the iteration over the rays. In orange, the iteration over the children of a node, and in blue, the iteration over the primitives. 
what this algorithm does is simply um, allocating a stack, pushing the root node onto the stack, and then um, looping until the stack is empty and for every, every uh, element on the stack, intersecting the child, uh, the children of the, of, of the node, and then proceeding on to the leaves and intersecting the uh, primitives in the leaves. So here we have three different domains. In green, this is the rays. And the rays are um, iterated over in a different manner. So on the CPU, the rays are um, mapped to vectors. So a ray is made of an origin, uh, a time parameter, and a direction. And so on, this, on the CPU, you want those to be um, represented as vectors. And this, um, this process is hidden within this iteration function. So the iteration function on the CPU will read the rays in uh, array of structures format and then transform them, the result back to, to structure of arrays when necessary. And this process is completely hidden with this iteration, within this iteration function. On the GPU, we, what we do here is that we um, trigger code generation for the GPU and uh, execute the traversal loop on the GPU using the NVVM intrinsic, which is basically uh, the QDA back and forth with the VM. And then uh, we can also iterate over the children of a node in a different manner because, um, as I said, we have diff slightly different exploration structure for the CPUs and GPUs. So we have slightly different heuristics as how we traverse those. And these are implemented in an um, abstract manner within this uh, iterate children um, abstraction. And then when we want to iterate over the triangles in the leaf, um, we have different, we can implement different indexing layouts or different memory layouts for the triangles. And this is implemented also in, inside this iterate, iterate triangles into abstraction. And um, because of this, we can also just swap the intersection routines or do any change at a high level without actually impacting the way this algorithm will run on the target hardware. So just to give you an example of how this uh, mapping code looks like, so that um, there's no magic, you know there's no magic involved, here you have the function that iterates over the rays. What this thing does is simply tr triggering code generation in orange here um, by doing a call to the NVVM intrinsic, and then loads the ray that you want to process using um, the LDG intrinsic to access to the GPU cache, and then executes the traversal loop that is provided as the higher order function body here in green. And in front of the body, you may notice that here we have this add sign, which triggers partial evaluation, which basically tells the compiler to execute as much as possible um, from now on to remove the cost of the um, function call. Basically inline the function call and also execute um, or inline the uh, closures that will be used in this code so that we don't have any closure built on the stack. And then the same is the CPU mapping for, for iterate rays, which will do this um, same, same similar sort of work. But here we use um, the parallel in, intrinsic, which will run this uh, piece of code in parallel. And we use the same trick to run the traversal loop on the, on the CPU with the um, add sign to remove any overhead. So the rest of the code is pretty similar. Um, we also use partial evaluation there to remove any overhead that comes from these abstractions. The full version is more complicated than what I just showed because the, it supports transparency maps, instancing, and other features that are required to do actual rendering. But it remains modifiable and understandable because it's still high level, so a user knows where to add features and where to remove features because the, the code is still high level. So now we have an evaluation of this, uh, these abstractions, uh, both in terms of performance and but also in terms of code complexity. So we have a set of scenes of varying complexity from very small to, for, for instance, on, on the left-hand side, you have a very, very small scene with only 10,000s of polygons. And on the right-hand side, the bottom right, you have a scene with 12 million polygons. So it's a varying complexity. And also different types of rays, so rays that directly are pretty coherent, so coming from the camera, where they have similar directions and origins. And um, shadow rays, which are a bit less coherent, and then completely random rays, which are really, really incoherent, which will basically mean that the vector units will not all be active at the same time, so they have different uh, performance uh, characteristics. 
So now if you look at this table, and make, uh, the, the performance is um, uh, measured for, for our implementation and, and, and Embry on two different, sorry, our implementation and Embry on the CPU and optics on the GPU. And we compile Embry with uh, two different compilers, the Intel compiler and Clang, because our, our framework is based on LLVM so that we, um, so that we have the same sort of optimizations as Embry, we, we choose to compile Embry with Clang so that they have exactly the same sort of optimizations on the back end as we do. But obviously the Intel compiler performs better here. But overall what these results say is that our GPU implementation is um, slightly faster than Optics and that the uh, CPU implementation when compared to Embry with comp compiled with Clang is faster and slightly slower when compiled when compared against Embry compiled with the Intel compiler. But this is not really a surprise since um, Embry is designed to work with the Intel compiler and programmed by the Intel people. But still it's with only within, at, at, in the worst case, 5% of, of uh, the hand-coded library Embry. And so and to measure the code complexity, the, the implementation effort, we use Hasted's complexity, complexity measure. So it's it's a bit better than a number of numbers of lines of code because it estimates the amount of time required to program based on the number of uh, unique operators and operands in, in your program. And so here are the results. Code complexity is really high for Embry because it's using compiler intrinsics, which is pretty similar to using um, assembly in the end. But it's quite small for the optics, which is um, in red here in the middle and when you zoom in so you see that um, if you take only the effort required to write the GPU implementation which would be in our in our framework um, the effort of the blue part plus the effort of the red part then we are approximately only half of what um, optics requires and because you already have written the common part you don't need to write it for every possible architecture it's just uh, written once and then you can reuse it. So as a conclusion, um, we have come up with a set of abstractions that allow us to write the traverse algorithm for different architectures. It's um, at least according to has to measure faster to write or simpler to write and implement. And it separates the concerns. So it separates the high level traversal algorithm from the iteration mechanisms required for this traversal algorithm. And uh, the performance evaluation shows that it's uh, as fast as or even faster sometimes than the state of the art in terms of performance. So that's done. Thank you.